Over a period of several videos, I've shown you just how easy it is to take a DTO and to store that information into Firebase. Now I'm going to show you how to not store something into Firebase by using the exclude annotation. And what do I mean by this? Here's the scenario. Let's say that you have the concept of a master record and detail records, multiple detail records that might belong to that master record. The example that I have is a specimen of a plant, like a redbud, and then the events that will happen to that plant over that plant's lifetime. I plant it, I water it, I fertilize it, I eat the flowers off of it, so on and so forth. So we have one specimen and multiple events that can happen. Now I want to associate these two together in memory when I'm running my program so that I can use them in a shared view model that's shared across two fragments. But I don't necessarily want the details to appear as part of the master's JSON when I save this entire record to Firebase Cloud Firestore. Instead, I want to use the collections framework in Firebase Cloud Firestore so that I can use some of the advanced query functions. If it helps, here's a visualization. I have here a specimen document that I've saved inside of a specimen collection. This is feather reed grass, a beautiful ornamental grass. You see, I can click on the events and you see that there are multiple events that tie back to this feather reed grass. And they're all tied together in this one document, which is essentially a JSON document. And for many purposes, that's fine, that's great. Let's look at another example. Here's something I put together earlier where I have a northern pecan, which is essentially a tree, and then you notice that that has a sub-collection called photos, and then under that I have a series of photos, and each one of those photos has its own JSON document. So that's kind of nice because I can use Firebase to walk directly down to one of these individual documents and just update that without having to make changes to the master document. So if I have an array list of events on this specimen and I don't want that array list of events to appear as the JSON that we see here, I need to use the exclude annotation. Let's see how we can do that. First, I'm going to refactor our existing specimen data class. We know one thing about Kotlin is we can create a data class or a DTO all in one line for very simple cases. We simply put all the attributes and their default values if needed into this constructor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this events out of the constructor, just like so. And we can put it in the constructor, but we really don't have to. We can do it another way as well. I can simply declare it right here on line number seven. Now I'm going to make a few adjustments. First of all, I'm going to make this properly encapsulated. So I'll say private events, but then I'm also going to put an underscore before the uh, private variable name, which is convention in Kotlin. After that, I'm going to make this accessible with a public or an internal variable. We'll just say var events, and public is what we get by default. Var events colon array list event, because we do want to give it a type. And then after that, we define the getter and the setter function for this. So get, open and close paren, open curly, return, and then underscore events, which is our private attribute we've declared up above. And then we'll say set value, and we'll say uh, underscore events equals value. Be very careful here. Make sure you note the difference between the public accessor events, which is the same name I used to have in the constructor, and the private variable event. I'll say when I first was running through this exercise in preparation for this video, I mistakenly left off the underscore. It crashed the program, it took me a long time to figure that out. So pay close attention, but nonetheless, this is just the syntax that we use in Kotlin to encapsulate a private field. If I were to run it like this, and I will pause the video and do that, it will give us the exact same behavior that we have now. Let's take a look. The application's running, and I went ahead and populated purple saxifrage in a nice purple plant. Go ahead and swipe to get take us to the event screen. We'll say event type transplant. We'll say one plant event date March 20th of 2020. And we'll say give it better sunlight is the description, something like that. Go ahead and save that. Now let's say water, one gallon. Okay. We'll make that on the 21st and we'll say let the roots sink in and save and swipe back. Now hit save. 
And we come over and let's see, it's going to give us a specimen ID or a document ID, which is going to make this a lot easier to find in Firebase. So we'll just remember 10XETX. Back to Firebase, we take a look at 10XETX. And what do we have? We have a nice purple plant. We have purple saxifrage and we have give it better sunlight and our transplant event and we have water with one gallon let the root sink in so you see right now we have exactly what we had when we had the attribute in the constructor we've simply moved it down into the body of the class so that we can apply our annotation to it now we specifically want to apply the annotation to the public getter method i tried to i tried to just put at exclude up here in the constructor that did not work if you happen to know a way to make that work let me know but the only way i could find to get it to work was to actually take this attribute out of the constructor make a public iter method for it or function if you will and then put exclude as an annotation right behind that it's going to prompt me to import it here and we do see com.google.firebase.firestore.exclude that sure does sound appropriate given what we have so add the annotation let's try our experiment one more time this time I've started us off with purple cone flower, also known as echinacea, and a wonderful healthy flower. I swipe to get to the event screen, and we'll say, well, once again, let's say transplant, or let's just say plant. Three uh, flowers, event date, we'll put this as the 21st of March, 2020, and we'll say planted three beautiful echinacea, and save. Now, oftentimes when we plant, we like to water it as well. So water, we'll say two gallons. Give them an initial watering. And then save. And then we'll swipe back again to get back to our master page. And we see the fragment swap happen. Come right back, and here we are at the master page. Now I'm going to choose save. And just one moment, let me snap a breakpoint on our save I want to take a look at the view model and I want to verify with you that it does indeed contain these two events. So I choose save, breakpoint hits. Now let's mouse over the view model. We see the view model has our specimen and notice our specimen has two events. One event is uh, plant them. So plant three beautiful echinacea. And then the other one is the water event give them an initial watering. So notice that this is in the specimen uh, variable here, which is part of our view model, and that is what we're going to be storing. So I go ahead and choose F9, and now we come to the part where we have stored the specimen. So once again, I can mouse over specimen, just double check with me, make sure I'm not lying here. I mouse over our specimen, and we see that our specimen still has two events. And we see that we have saved this to what document? We're going to look for 90Q2S, 90Q2S. I'll go ahead and press F9 to tell it to save. We look in Firebase for 90Q2S, and here it is right here. And you notice this time it has saved our echinacea, our purple, our purple cone flower. Saved it with a latitude and longitude, but unlike the last one we saved, it did not save that events array. Now, we will need to take some extra steps to actually start a collection for the events and then put the events in that collection. We haven't handled that yet, but what I do want to show you is that we have successfully used the at exclude annotation to say we do not want to persist this particular field to Firebase, but we do want to persist all of the other fields to Firebase. As always, I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.